Hey guys, welcome back again to Vanishing Gates. As always, I'm your host, Jay, with my co-host... The benevolent and amazing Jack. Yeah, okay, he added that tagline. So guys, just a heads up, today I'm, I'm feeling a little under the weather, but the show must go on as they say, so... If I had to do it while I had strep throat and I couldn't stand properly, he has to do it when his, you know, yeah, I'm just not shit's falling good. apart. Anyhow, guys, yeah, I've been sick since, well, a couple days ago, just catching up to me. I do this thing where I, I don't take a lot of time off of work if I can avoid it. So, yeah. I believe you once dropped a, what, a thousand pound safe on your knee and still went to work? Yeah, it wasn't quite that heavy. But, uh, anyway, so go ahead and what's the Cigar of the Week? The, the, uh, the show, Cigar of the Show, we got to get used to that. The Cigar of the Show is the Andalusian Bowl. The Andalusian Bowls. Yeah, torpedo it's cut. Smooth. It's smooth. great. It's got this weird shape where it it's longer. Torpedo shape. Like it's yeah. like thicker as it goes out, so it looks just kind of comical yeah, when you first start smoking it. Triangle cut it, and yeah. I don't know. It's, it's not a bad cigar. It's a great though. cigar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Smooth doesn't leave a bad uh, taste behind. It does leave a lot of fume and like bad, heavy smell in the air, either, I've noticed. Yeah, and you know, I, I the one thing, the one complaint I have is that it doesn't seem to stay lit very easily for me. Well, it's because like, you're not heating it up enough. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's just me. Yeah, you just didn't heat it enough, probably. All right, so uh, on tonight's episode, we're going to talk about something we haven't really touched base on yet, and we're going to talk about Mothman. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, the Mothman, um, basically, in uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia, between 12th November 1966 and December 15 in 1967, people were starting to see this weird, this weird creature that was, you know, kind of like a, a man slash bird. Yeah, it was. You know, the thing is, is, the thing that gets me is when I when I read these descriptions, like they have a Mothman statue, I believe, in the town. Yeah, they now. they erected a statue. They've had like, Mothman celebration now. Except for the, the thing is, is, it has a head, and every description I've ever heard, even from the people in Point Pleasant, it doesn't have one. Well, I've heard both. I've heard that it has a head, and then I've heard that it's it might have been like a lot of them was like it was like a what a crow does or a vulture does when it puts its shoulders up really high oh uh, yeah or it doesn't look yeah. like it has a head or the wings or, are out like on an owl it can look like that kind of generally don't those particular animals only do that when they're perched or when they're about to take off into flight i would, I would say yeah but they, they, a lot of these descriptions come mid-flight well no or taking off in flight a lot of them like ah, the first okay. encounter um on november 15th uh a couple from point or the second encounter actually the first encounter uh, um was different. We'll get into that, but on, on your point there, um, November 15th, 66, two couples from Point Pleasant, Roger and Linda Scarberry and Steve and Mary Mallet, to, or Malay, Mallet, uh, guys, I don't know how to pronounce that. It's, it's Malay. M-A-L-L-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. If you guys have some insight on that, that'd be Malay. correct us and send your corrections and side notes. And if you guys know more about Mothman, just email us at vanishinggates at gmail.com. <laughs> Maybe. Two G's and Vanishing Gates. Yeah, two G's and Vanishing Gates. We don't have to do that every time. By now, it's probably well ingrained in their brains. Um, also, guys, check us out on the Facebooks. The same thing, Vanishing Gates Podcast. Both is the of Facebook the Facebooks. Page. All the face, all the Facebooks, the books yes. with faces in them. Plural Facebooks. We're going to be in all of those one day. But we will not be on MySpace. Uh, I, I was going to break that to you gently. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had to just. No, I we're not even on MySpace. Hammer at home there. Okay, so the first encounter on November 12th, 66. <laughs> now the the account I've heard there were varying accounts. One says two men, another says five men were digging a grave in a cemetery n near Clendenin, West Virginia. Claimed to see a man-like figure flying low from the trees overhead. And uh, this is regarded as the first sighting, official sighting of Mothman. Yeah, and, you know, what, what? one thing I do have to say is they were digging a grave in a cemetery. Because when, when I first read that, I, I missed the part where it's so a cemetery. A grave. <laughs> and I was like, two, five, I'm just like, maybe <laughs> someone should ask why these people were digging a grave. And why, why does it take five people to dig a grave? Actually, I, 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 work, I, working in a mortuary, it can take five people to dig a grave. Even with today's technology, the more the merrier. P digging Sweet a grave Jesus. is a pain in the ass. You use excavators now and you still use five you know, I've, people. I've dug deeper holes than that with my hands. Well, an average grave is at least six foot deep, so and it's wide enough to fit a big casket in. And if it's someone with a lot of money, they might even have an, entum an entumer in over the casket to okay. stop people from stealing from the I could see a hashtag casket. movement about Jack now. <laughs> Jack is the Mole Man prophecies. He digs giant holes with his hands. Oh, man, the Mole Man prophecies. <laughs> We're gonna get sued you should have Simpsons copyrighted now. that. Was that a thing on The Simpsons? The no, Simpsons Mole Man. That? He's part of The Simpsons. No, I He's was going to say. Well, no, there's been lots of things called Mole Man. Okay, back to the story. So <laughs> the, 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 the set of couples that saw him, what I was trying to say when, when he takes off, looks like he's perching up, they were driving um, near what's called the TNT area, and what it was is an old munitions plant back in World War II. It's basically been converted into a wildlife refuge or something to that effect. 
or a national forest or something. And they were approaching this thing, and they said it was, uh, it had, when the lights, the headlights of the car hit, it had bright red round eyes, about two inches apart or something like that. And um, it was white, and it, like, went up into the air and took off as they approached it. Yeah and flew kind of towards the munitions factory a little bit, or the old munitions area, and they continued to drive off, and it started flying after them. Now, there's some differentiating stories from that, you know. There's some stories I've read that say, oh, it was just in the middle of the road, and then some people say, the oh, side of the road it was or... above the building, or it was above a particular... Well, these uh, might be different encounters you're mixing, too, because there's over 100 sightings recorded of this particular creature oh, that's true. during this pretty much or this year of time, around a year of time. Yeah, because I remember, I might say, be remembering what I heard, which was, uh, I think it was at a power plant. It was actually near the old power plant instead of the uh, TNT era. No, it was the TNT, they just called it the TNT era. There might have been other ones, though. Um, a lot of it happening around the TNT area. Well, let's see. I think it's because the theory is that it lives in the old army base around there, right? I, I don't there know. Was, I know there was a theory Okay, that's that. the other thing, too. There is, a, there is a military base of some fashion, or a couple of them around there, and, and one... One particular theory is that instead of it being a creature, it's actually a paratrooper testing a new flight suit of some fashion. Which, I mean, man, jetpacks and stuff back then were about as tenuous as they are now. Yeah. Not really in existence in a no, they, they functional exist way. Now, but not but in a way, way that, that would be. I mean, useful. if they don't even like work that well now, it's yeah. probably not the case. Now, again, this could be like a giant. Like some a a aberration of a barn owl that got really huge, or yeah. maybe a thunderbird of some fashion. They talk about those in all over the country. A large animal could not be shot. I mean, <laughs> what? I don't know. If, like, I, I legitimately don't know if this is a fucking hoax, but that giant alligator that they found walking around. No, that was that was legit. Yeah, they've oh, seen yeah. this thing like a bunch of times, and it's just abnormally huge. Yeah, he just walks because it's ancient. And, yeah. you know, just, it depends on the area. Like, animals could get abnormally large. Yeah, part of the thing, I don't think birds in general tend to live very long, though. And for a, a, a bird to get that big, it's like most animals, it requires a lot of time. You or, know, like, animals that aren't really restricted as much by gravity, like big fish, like catfish that are the size of people, which do happen. We have video of them. We know they exist. Well, so, it could be the goldfish effect. Like, a lot of people think goldfish are these little tiny things that just float around and fucking, you know... Well, it's because they're captive in this little small space. They grow to so their size. So when you put them in a larger space right, and a area. bigger food source, they can grow larger. Yeah, don't they grow up to like six feet long or something like that? Goldfish, no. no. I don't think they're pretty fucking big. I'm pretty sure they don't grow to six feet yeah. in length. I'm but, Okay, catfish that are six feet plus in length, while they happen, they're still considered kind of weird. And, I want a six-foot-long goldfish. I, I, if you can find horrifying. me a six-foot-long goldfish, I would be stoked. <laughs> I'd put a freaking laser on his head. Oh, my gosh. So... More of the story here. Basically, tons of people, uh, they go to the police, the newspaper pick it up, newspapers pick it up, um, and then hunting parties to try to find this thing are established. I don't know, you have more encounters written down. Yeah, right? I, I, I found encounters that happened throughout the years, not particularly pertaining to this incident in Point Pleasant, but it was just like over the several years and periods and time like that, you know, like... Um, what was it? There was uh, some say during in Chihuahua, Mexico, just before the outbreak of the swine flu, where a, a lot of people fucking died. The people, uh, apparently, a bunch of people reported maybe hundreds. I mean, the thing is, is there's so many, this is un, you know, you can't cooperate any of this. Corroborate. Corroborate. Well, yeah, I, got, I mean, let's go back to this, this particular situation, though, because we can move on to those other things, because I got a couple more situations that aren't the, that are similar but not the same to talk about. After I want to touch base on the. The Mothman at Point Pleasant. Yeah, yeah. Now, basically it all culminates on December 15th in 1967 when the Silver Bridge, not Silver Bridge, Silver, the Silver Bridge, Silver Bridge, not a bridge made of silver. It's yes. Titled the Sil <laughs> Guys, again, I'm not feeling too good, so bear with me here. Uh, I'm struggling to get through this first 10 minutes. <laughs> but the Silver Bridge collapsed and killed 46 people in the collapse. Hmm. Um, basically, an eye bar in the suspension mechanism uh, went to crap or in a suspension chain went to crap and the whole thing collapsed and it's weird because just prior it had been inspected and passed inspection pretty much with flying colors is what I what I've read and that's kind of kind of weird that this thing would just fail after having a thorough inspection now maybe it wasn't a thorough inspection you know not to make light of it and, and the inspection person I don't want to bring any blame on them because I don't know anything about how they inspect bridges I just I would assume on a suspension type bridge it would be pretty thoroughly inspected especially one because it was made in like it was 
put up in 1926. Was it? Yeah, I believe it was 1926 was the year it was It was actually, like, put full into, you know, use. Are you just guessing, or did you, did you no, read I that somewhere? It up. Okay, good. So, <laughs> now there's... Look it up! Google yeah, magic, my yeah, friends. here's the thing. Like, some sometime later, I don't think right away the Mothman was being blamed or tied to it, but somewhere along the way, it was said that, that some people had seen the Mothman around the bridge before the collapse of yeah, the bridge. Yeah, yeah. And then, it, no more Mothman in Point Pleasant. Well, I mean, Virginia, West Virginia. In in genuine, one of the Virginias. In genuine, for like large sightings and things that they can actually like find reports on newspaper articles, and people who put their names on it. Legitimately, that was the last sighting of Mothman. Like other other than like one or two people maybe seeing it out and out and about. This was the last mass sighting of Mothman, except for maybe the swine flu epidemic, which there are no names attached to it. There's like there's no real there's no real evidence to to prove that that ever took place. The Point Pe- Pleasant one was legitimately the last one, and people, you know, you know I think there's the Blackbird of Chernobyl, but we, I don't even think that's I think, real. I think it? that's just a, a. I looked it up, and from what I can gather, is that was just a an internet story. Now, guys, if you know more about the Blackbird of Chernobyl, which is similar, basically a very similar creature, but with no head, was spotted around Chernobyl right before the reactor went down. Though it doesn't, there's no accounts of it being there during the reactor. Failing. I think it was reactor number four or something. No, like that. it was the thing is it wasn't during the the reports I was reading about it. According, it was all prior according to the to story, it happening that, in what supposedly yeah. happened, it was much like what happened at Point Pleasant. People were getting phone calls that were threatening them. I'm pretty sure the there. phone calls thing was just from that movie, dude. I don't think that was well. A thing. That, according to the things I was reading, people or that Point guy Pleasant that wrote getting the book about it or something. But the thing is, is what I what I would say to that is phones weren't exactly common back then, were they? I mean, like when did they become common in a household thing? Like, dude, you're talking about the 1960s. But the 60s and Chernobyl was in the 80s. Well, I mean, could you think about people in Chernobyl? It wasn't exactly uh, a wealthy area. Okay, so guys, if you didn't phones. have a phone in the 60s and the 80s, I don't know where the fuck you lived, but I had a phone. Pripyat. You lived Pripyat. in Pripyat. If you were in Pripyat, it, where the nuclear reactor is, you had a phone. I did. Have you seen pictures no. of it's Chernobyl? It's a really nice place, I think. It was, it was astounding. They were building an amusement park. Of freaky and now? They had tons of money. Yeah, it's creepy now. You guys should look, if you guys have, if you guys want a second off topic of Mothman, go look up the pictures of Prepyat before and after. It's freaky But we'll do it after shit. the podcast because, you know. Yeah, don't do it now. Listen to us, tra- fuckers. Come on, guys. Pay attention here. We're trying to teach you guys something. Anyway, so the, now, the, the stories go for uh, the Chernobyl. Hold on. And the, the, the point pleasant was that, you know, phone calls, threatening phone calls, uh, illnesses, things like that. But the thing is, is, is none of this could be, like I said, none of this can be um, pointed that fact. In fact, even when you read the stories of what happened in Point Pleasant, the original stories, there's no mention of phone calls. It's not until you actually see either the movie The Mothman Prophecy or read the book that they actually talk about no, phone calls. No, until we've read the book. That's just what I read that it was yeah, in the no, book. No. <coughs> so we haven't read the book. Maybe you guys have read it. Yeah, maybe they don't mention phone email calls. Email us about it and get a hold of us, you know. But, um, yeah, so... Talking about the the Blackbird of Chern- was it the Blackbird of Chernobyl? What they yeah, called it or yeah. something? Yeah, there's a similar story that's prior to all of the or well prior to the Chernobyl, but between them. Sorry, it's not prior to, but it's between. And it's the Freebird Shrieker. Never heard of that one. So yeah, on September 10th, 1978, at a mill in Freiburg, Germany. I think it's Freiburg. It might be Freiburg, guys. I'm not totally sure. Twenty one miners arrived at work to find a dark figure with wings in the entrance to the mine. And every time they try to approach it, this thing would unfurl its wings and let out this loud, horrifying screech and shriek. And some people said it sounded like 50 people screaming or the sound of a train coming off the rails right before a huge crash. And so every time they'd approach the mine, it would do this. So they stayed out of the mine, and they just decided to do what some other <coughs> pardon me, work they had to do around the mine. Until this thing fucked off. <laughs> oh, no, and then shortly, shortly after, there was a huge explosion in the mine. Did no one think to shoot this thing? Or well, it would have killed everybody that was in the mine. Oh, that's true. Because it, so it basically, the, it, the guys live. Now, it goes on to say in the story that most of the people that were involved that stayed away um, started having really bad luck and, and basically dying all of a sudden, but in, in different incidences. Well, it saved them so, from the horrible explosion. Well, so they it, suffer later. Well, it's like, <laughs> then there's a story on a website I found. I don't have my phone on me. But the uh, Crimean War Monster, which was similar, it, it followed the same description. It was like a, a big, headless, crow-style bird. So th- it begs the question, are these things, is it one entity? Is it like a harbinger of doom and destruction? Is it, the, instead of causing these things, is it just something that signals around? Because... And all sorts of folklore all, all, all around the world, there's stories of these harbingers of doom that meet similar 
storylines and, and, and circumstances. Maybe not all directly, but I mean, even crows and ravens were considered harbingers of doom sometimes. Or and you know, back in Viking, Viking dogs, cats, yeah, dogs and cats. But back in Viking times, you know, the the raven was Odin's eye, so he'd go and send him out to, to check things for him, whether it's good or bad, who knows? But in Viking culture, it was usually bound to end in bloodshed. Yeah, in Viking so. mythology, <laughs> the North North. You mythology. know, you know, there's a theory that the sheriff in the local college had, which was it was basically a crane. The sheriff referred to this as the shit shite poke, shite poke, shite poke, shite poke. Yeah, and no, if you're, is, if you're is, Irish and you say shite poke, it conjures a completely different. Yeah, totally, totally, totally different, totally different thing. In that now we're just being gobshites. <laughs> See, I can be humorous even when I'm not feeling. Apparently, it was a large hair on hair on hair on Heroin. Large it was hair a large on, heroin. Like the president's hair on? <laughs> a large hair on his head. But. Was it orange? Uh, apparently, during the Point Pleasant instance, a farmer had blamed the buzzing of his television, and his dog had disappeared. What had happened was he went outside, his TV was buzzing, his dog was barking at the, the door, and he opened the door to look because he saw something in the woods. He opened his door, and I guess he walked out or something, and standing like at the distance, he shined a light into the forest, and. The two bright eyes, which is what the description of the Mothman has, the, these two huge eyes, like like fucking bike reflectors, shone back at him, and he flipped out. The dog went after the thing, and he turned tail instead of calling his dog, I guess, and ran into the house. Bye, photo. It's been a good run. <laughs> and that was the last he ever saw of his dog, yeah, mind you. That no. was... I mean, it could have been is, a bear. Yeah, it could have been a fucking bear. Like, they have pretty big eyes, I imagine. Well, yeah, I mean, and the thing, too, is if, you, if you're in the dark and you shine your light on something... And, I mean, if it's far enough away and the light's not enough to really give a good, like, uh, you got a weak flashlight. And now we have these, like, million lumen LED flashlights that are, like, you can, you can light possibly up. give someone a fucking sun. Yeah, band. you can see, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can see blocks, away, a block and a half away with good detail. But back then, I mean, I still have shitty flashlights that run on, you know, D-cell batteries. Not, not my mag lights, because those work really well, but cheaper, like, ever-ready ones. That twenty feet away, I can see the outline of someone that I couldn't see before. But that's about yeah. it. Or their eyes flashing. So think about it. These guys are flashing their cheaper flashlights a lot of the time, and they're catching the outline of something. It's going to look dark and shadowy. It's the Mandela effect. And it, God, we're gonna we're not going to do the Mandela effect yet. We are going to do a Mandela effect episode just so we can save Jack's soul. So oh. we could we could teach me what the fuck the bit. I still haven't even looked it up. Like, I just, oh my one God, of these days I'm going to Google this shit. I'm I'm not going to go into it. We'll talk about it tomorrow maybe. You know, I think we'll I think my my, my idea meeting. with the Mandela effect is actually a Mandela effect at this point. Uh, you know, I could actually um, no, it's still not. <laughs> I was trying to circle it around and save you on that one, but it's not going to happen. But what I'm saying is, man, that you look at them in the woods and stuff, and it's again a lot of misidentity with a lot of these things. And you, the thing about the crane, I'm pretty sure herons and cranes don't tend to swoop up dogs. They're more like you know yeah. the sharp beaks. Now I know that they've been known. Certain species have been known to kill people. They've got too close. Oh yeah, they can. Not necessarily because they attack people, but because people get too close, they get threatened. They have a really sharp beak, and that can go right through somebody's eyeball. And there's stories of stuff but, like that happening. You know, and the thing about like people would ask why why he didn't small shoot. birds. What, what, one of the things is like why why he didn't shoot too afraid. It's like with the with the the mine thing. Why the people didn't shoot at the thing in the mine? Well. The thing is, is they didn't know they were going to potential that thing was going to explode. But the thing is, is they they could have had a natural instinct that says this thing wasn't a threat per se. Well, here's the thing: and their too, natural instinct to not want to it go. It was in. in the entrance of the mine, so it doesn't say that they could actually make out what it was. And they're there early in the morning, probably getting ready to go. And you know, they they got their headlights on, probably. They got some lights, and they probably got some lanterns. I don't know that you'd want to take a fire lantern into a mine, though. A fire it's lantern, like a lantern, like a old oh, style, okay. you know, like an old coal style thing. lantern. Yeah. Yeah. So they might have had the same situation where it was just a misidentity that just happened to be a, a coincidence. But again, we have these harbingers of doom all through folklore. I mean, in Ireland we have banshees, which would come about and follow families and stuff and sc would scream before someone died. You'd hear, you'd hear the banshee. Um, there's even stories about that Wendigo thing you always want to talk about as a harbinger of doom. We'll get into that eventually, I'm sure. Yes, Maybe we have people that know more about it that would come on and, and talk to us on the show. That'd be great. If we can get some of the natives around here. I, I don't know, know if the local there guys have lore. Wendigo legends. I'll have to talk to some of them. Yeah. That'd be really cool, though. I know. I think we did, but we both know a few of them. Um, well, there's also like uh, the Nain Rogue or Red Dwarf from Normandy, France, and that's been apparently in, um, I want to say, Pittsburgh as well. Pittsburgh. That's quite the change. That's random as shit. I think it's Pittsburgh. <laughs> I could be wrong. Oh, and it might be Detroit. But it's a, it's a one of the... Let's just face it. One, there are American death city. omens on every corner in Detroit. <clears throat> yeah. Going to Detroit is a death omen, technically. 
Oh, it's much like Chicago. Just walking in is pretty much you're probably going to get no, killed. No, no, no. Detroit is like you. walking through the pre-Amazonian rainfo- rainforest, growing back up around destruction. Whereas Chicago's just uh, guys. If you're in Chicago, don't take this insultingly. You should. You already know better. Yeah, you should know. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, uh, you know, in my theory, I think what it is is the cities themselves are actual death omens. Like when you when you're flying over, they're like. We're now passing over Detroit. You're like, ah, oh, shit, my plane's about to go down. Well, I, I, don't, know, man. I don't know if I had that feeling. You've gotten close. If, if my cab driver's like, yeah, we got to pass through Detroit to get to wherever <laughs> you're going, I'm like... <laughs> I'll pay you $100 I, to go any other man, direction. Can we, just go, can we just go drink the water and... Uh, let's, let's go to Flint. <laughs> let's go to Flint and <laughs> drink the water. You have a 50-50 shot in Flint, you don't in Detroit. <laughs> yeah, no. It's, it's like when you drive into Oakland, you know, you just... Can I just go around this place sometime? Where the fuck was the Mothman on that warning? If he's a, if he's a harbinger of like warning people, he should have been in Detroit and fucking well, Chicago warning just, people about that shit. Maybe that's where they live. I don't know. Do you, I think again though, you're talking about places where there's known cons- considerable, consistent tragedy and bad things. This is like places. This guy is this thing is showing up that aren't necessarily known for that. Yeah. It's, well, I mean, it's, it's it's large tragedies, but the thing is. is I mean, the, the the founding and creation of Detroit is a large tragedy, but you can't exactly say that... You know, that Detroit wasn't always like that, buddy. We're not going to get into it, but it wasn't always like that. It became that way after years of, of neglect and, and bad things. Bad. Bad. bad things. We know the history of yeah, that. Anyway, so <laughs> we're not going to go into it. It's not the kind of podcast for history. <laughs> for that kind of history. We're talking about... Unexplained history, not uh, stuff that you can I think this is unexplained history, too, because no one can figure out why it happened. Now, okay, you're so the one stupid. that wanted to talk about Mothman, so is that all you got again? Because last time you wanted to talk about the green kids at Look, stop, Wolfat, stop and insulting my, my, my decision. You there. come into these things with, oh, I got, I got notes, and I'm like, we're I got coming, seven we're coming pages into this of notes. Fight with like in, with a, I've got one page. you got one page of notes. I do shows that get like seven pages of notes, and we can talk for like 25 minutes before we have to talk about 40 other things. And we've already gone there, we're in 20 look, minutes into the look, show. I, I, I'm telling you, <laughs> I came into this so prepared. And then I realized I had nothing. See, and you, you didn't tell me that when we started. I asked you, you ready? You're like, oh yeah, we got this. Look, you could be looking at look. your little magic tablet book there and, t- and reading my magic. stories about this shit, man. <laughs> that oh, Jay man. thinks yeah. that, that tablets are magic. <laughs> magic. The, he probably the magic thinks cars device. run on... Run on magical powers. Uh, I'm pretty sure you got little critters in there running around on a <laughs> wheel that powers that thing. I'm not that old-fashioned, guys. I'm, I'm just, I'm not feeling good today, you can tell. Well, I mean, I guess, I, you know, I think the thing is, is, is I, you know, some, I, I came into this with some things. I thought I'd write down questions so we could kind of okay, get points no more apologetics. It. You still think that satyrs are goat men. You don't even know what a satyr is. You know We've what? Established Fuck that. you. Satyrs are goat men who have upper bodies of men and they're fawns. They play with flutes. That sounds like a lot of people. I've they evolved seen. into the t- the times. Okay, they became giant monsters instead. Since the idea of uh, what what was that fucking goat god? Uh, what Baphomet or some shit? Baphomet. <laughs> they just decided that was the creepiest thing that was similar to them. Oh my god, dude! They're mocking Baphomet. people. That's what it is. And you know, I did say one thing I did forget was last time was that I, I do believe, um, I, I do believe people who followed things like sprites, like which I believe a satyr is technically classed as a sprite, that if they followed them in the woods, they would often disappear. And so when I said that they up. weren't intending to hurt you, I was I was kind of wrong, because you would uh, I, I think people vanish when they followed them into the woods. Like they would they would try to get people to well, go back, into those places again. To go back to when we were talking a while back about, like, your parents warning you not to do stuff with folklore, you know, a lot of these things. But this is a different kind of situation, again, with the Mothman. Let's try to reel it back to this for five seconds. Okay. Because this Maybe. is, this isn't like your parents are warning you, hey, don't do that. This is, a bunch of people saw something inexplicable at different points in time that was very similar. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure throughout history there's other stories of similar things, you know. I, I'm sure that there are harbingers of doom, or whatever you want to call them, from back in the day. So the question, okay, what do you think? Mothman, um, people are seeing something. Do you think it's an alien? What do I... You know, I, I, know, I, I came out of left field. Why would you think it's an alien? What do I think well, here's why I bring it up. Because, and see, oh, I had another caveat here. There were also UFO sightings reported in that area quite frequently around that time. Was there possibly a giant, a giant giant, drug pharmaceutical plant in that area that happened to explode or something? Mass hysteria. That no one noticed? You know, and that's the thing. There's a lot of different descriptions, too. I had an eyewitness, eyewitness, and I should have wrote more down, but I thought you had more notes, so I stopped, because this is kind of going to be your, your run, of the, run of the game here. 
Yeah, I tried to do that I with gotta, the green, the gotta green kids of Wolf Pit. I gotta learn about the, the green kids of the Tiger Pit. It went really well. It t- went Tom really Wolf well. Pit. This is going perfect so far, I think. Oh, man. Okay, well, I have something else to talk about. So let's take a break for a couple minutes, and we'll be back shortly. I don't want (laughs) to. And we're back. Sorry for the break. We We had to reconvene and connect, and I had to go and throw up a little bit. But it's all right. You beat me with a a stick. I'm still sick, guys. Sorry. With a a white thorn stick. Hey, hey. I did not beat you with a white thorn 2x4. A hawthorn 2x4. Hawthorn 2x4s, people. Shillelagh, maybe. You know, I, I'm still wondering if that works on vampires. Anyway, I want to If I hit him, it's going to work. You ever think that that's the original story for how people killed vampires, but then you realize that it didn't work, and now you wonder why people think to stab them in the fucking chest with something that wouldn't work anyways? Well, they said in the first place that when you... Okay, guys, we're off topic. We're gonna, <laughs> so we're going to do some discussion here. Jack's got some more notes on La Mothman. You know, I, I have a few questions. Yeah, we can discuss, we can banter, and I want you guys to get involved in this too. Like... Each one of these questions, you know, they're, they're for us to just kind of, you know, get a good feel. But I really want to know what you guys feel. So if you hear a question and you have an opinion on it, please write in the comment section. We read that. I know we don't, we haven't commented on it yet, but it's not like we're ignoring it. We just haven't gotten any comments yet. We just haven't thought about it yet. Yeah, that. <laughs> and emails. Lots of emails. We need emails. Yeah, we need emails. Vanishinggates, 2Gs, gmail.com. I know Jay says we don't need to keep saying 2Gs, but... Yeah, I might as well to catch up. We're, we're, we're two G's in a, in, a, no, in a... No, we're not. No? No. No, no we're not two G's at no. all. Never mind. Anyways, <laughs> so, what is Mothman? That's my question for you. What is he? Angel? Demon? Alien? I don't know, man. I, I, like Smurf? I, Smurf. Like I said, I, I, I lean away from the paratrooper aspect, the, like, their experimental <laughs> military... <laughs> well, the, in the suit, the flight suit thing. I, I lean away from that, like the experimental... Mil- I know there's a military base there, but... I, the military, it's always like, it's either aliens or the military, or it's a monster, you know what I mean? Like, I i don't want to say that it's just misidentity, I think it's a combination of things. I think that the Mothman, especially in this particular story, is a culmination of different things. It's probably, the first thing was a misunderstood, firstly a misunderstood sighting. So you're not seeing what you think you're seeing. So it's misidentification. And I don't think they're all even saying the, seeing the same thing, because they're describing things differently sometimes. They, because they don't have any real, any more names than the first couple people, guys, sorry. But um, they're not really, dis- they're not all describing the same thing. I mean, now, I think it's that mixed with mass hysteria because of it. The news put it out, people were going on hunting parties for it, they were looking for this thing, looking for blood, really. Looking to try to figure out what the hell it was. And for what reason, though? Because it scared them, you know what I mean? It didn't pose any threat to scared. anyone. It didn't attack anybody. You know, like, there's that Owlman of, uh, what was it, in England, um, the Cornwall, that, I don't remember the dates on it, um, but there's this terrorized young women or something in, in the street at night, it would chase them down, it was very similar in description, but it never actually hurt anyone, directly. So, what I'm thinking, I mean, there was a story about a woman during this particular situation, she was so scared, there were a group of them running, and she was carrying her child, dropped her child, and fell, picked the baby up, and ran into the house and slammed the door. And then the thing, the Mothman, apparently stood outside the door and watched them. Now, I've seen some old illustrations, because back in the day when I was more... Because believe it or not, guys, there was a time I was more um, mindful about these things and learned. Coherent. Coherent, yeah. More learned. I had a lot more books. It was before the Mandela Effect. And, oh my god, no Mandela Effect. So, I would read a lot and about these kind of situations when I was much younger, and I'd see these descriptions, these illustrations of witnesses of the Mothman, and a couple of them were straight up what you would think of as a gray alien. That's quite different than what people are describing in the main crux of the story. Well, you know, stories change over time. Well, that's the thing, too. This one hasn't, hasn't had enough time to really change a lot. I mean, there is supposedly a video that someone captured. He was not at the bridge, but he was... It was inside the top of the bridge was inside of his video camera when the bridge collapsed. And he recorded it on like a family video and they found it some odd many years later. Oh my god. And I want to say that people was even it said a they saw a what? Was it a Zapruder? I don't know what that means. Zapruder film? No. From JFK exactly. assassination. Oh, it came from uh, the the grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of those kind of things. It was the Zapruder no, film. No, I think what it was is the, the film was probably legit. The guy saw, because you just see the top under the tree line of the bridge go down, I guess. But, I, you know, and the, the thing is. Yeah, old evidence is su- seemingly seem like videos and stuff almost seems more realistic than newer evidence video wise 
because of all the shit you can do with cameras. Like, there's pictures of the, quote, mo supposed Mothman right before 9-11. Yeah. Come on, man. You're not going to be flying around there and not have millions of people in New York Middle City in broad New York. daylight talk, not talking about it, dude. Especially in 2011. It wasn't going to happen. No. Everyone would have known about it. 2011. But people have... 2001. Oh my god, 2001. <laughs> Guys, sorry, I do know when the... Oh god, rest him. <sighs> anyway, yeah, so in 01, supposedly, and these pictures have shown up more recently with much more obviously digital technology than it was what? around then. Wait, are you trying yeah. to tell me people fake things? All the time. Son of a bitch. Yes, much like every woman you've ever been with. I've only been with one, so... <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I don't know. We're about know. to have a conversation later. You could have so. just left that there and laughed. No. You, you salty bastard. No. All right, what's I'm your not next question? You off this you decided the Mothman isn't actually a thing. What? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just, that's that was that's my theory, well, guys. My, my again, theory, this is my theory. I'm just. What if it's what like, if it's a shadow person? What if it's my theory? Well, the shadow be, person who takes form of whatever you're afraid of. Shadow people don't usually have glowing red eyes, though. Ah, but, but I think that all the encounters pretty much did say the same thing about the eyes, regardless of how they viewed the appearance all directly. Them. And if everybody has an image in their head of what something well, is scary, and, and, and if it goes back to my theory in the shadow person, what if it takes the form of something that scares well, you the most? Even the the Crimean Warbird thing and the Cornwall Owl Man and the one in Germany, they all had the same description of the eyes. So what if it's like, you know, like to get crazy here, what if it's a, it's a mass conspiracy and it's just a shadow person? What if like the majority of things people are seeing out there are just shadow people? And it's just these, these amorphous blobs that take the form of whatever scares you or try to scare you with something. And then, for instance, with the Mothman, what if it's, if it's you know, what if it's, if this particular blob took the form of something that scared someone at any given time, like, that, then people knew there were birds that lived, like, in that particular area, the TNT area, there were people who would live, like, with, they'd have pigeons that lived in all these other areas. Are you saying the, you're scared of, of pigeons? No. <laughs> but what if, the, what, if the, what they saw was birds, and the person just happened to get startled by a bird, and this thing just decided, hey, this will be a great thing to take the image of. I mean, that's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard, but what the hell, right? Well, I thought of this just now, so maybe it did too. Maybe it, was, it, was, it had a... a Maybe it had a jack moment. It was like, you know what? We're going to take the most arbitrary, stupid thing we could do and pretend to be a giant bird. This is going to go really fucking well. Maybe. Anywho, so what I was saying about the, um, the, the wildlife area or the, uh, the TNT area, the old plant, was they, they were saying, one of the reports I read was that people said that the reason they thought it lived there was because the, all the other areas of that, that site had pigeons and bats and shit, you know? Like all sorts of wildlife. But in the area that the moth, Mothman supposedly lived in, there were none. There, there was nothing there. There was nothing would, nothing would go there. Nothing lived there. Like they all seemed to just avoid it. All life, basically. All wildlife wouldn't go anywhere near that that particular section. Well, there's a lot of like regular animals that cause similar things like that. If you've been out in the woods, like if okay, so here's a rule of thumb: if you're out in the woods and everything's normal wood sounds, it's it's always quiet. Oh yeah. But there's a difference between quiet in the woods and, and silent. absolute silence. And I've been, like, in situations where I don't know what exactly is going on deep in the woods, either by myself or with somebody else, and all of a sudden, every animal explodes, every bird explodes out of the trees, and then it's just silence. Like, real silence. Yeah. That's like, there's something there, you know? Well, that, you know, that's the thing, is, is if, they, if they were really afraid of this thing, and that story would, had credibility, they wouldn't go anywhere near it at all. They wouldn't go near the building if they were afraid of it. And... You know, there are some tales I heard that it, it like it's it's killed deer and it, it's hunted things. And, you know, the thing is, this is is people. It always it always it gets really funny to me when people are like, uh, there was a dead deer there. It was mutilated. It freaked me out. I'm just sitting there thinking, dead deer, mutilated. Okay, so animals dying is what's scaring you at the moment. But bears eat animals. We eat animals. Are these things not allowed to eat animals? Uh, I mean, again, I don't know why these things would be eating animals that they're shadow people. I don't think the shadow people are ever seen eating anything. Well, I'm talking about the Mothman. It's just not, well, not know, even but if it's shadow the Mothman. Well, I was thinking, here, I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to remember what the damn animal's called. Um, what was it, a lethophold? The damn uh, There are mythological creatures that, uh, I'm at the risk of accidentally reading something from Harry Potter. But there are... That's going to go well. I'm not going to go there, because I think it's just a Harry Potter creature, but it sounds like something I've read about before, because I have read in some of my older mythology books that I had when I was younger. There are creatures that He's live and dwell people. off of fear. 
that that's their like ancient oh stories. Oh my god, that is definitely Harry Potter creature. No, but there are, but there are. Well, where do you think she got the idea for these things from her own? Well, there, there are creatures that, no. that that feast off fear. Yeah. Uh, and again, I've never read any Supposedly. guys. I've never read any Harry Potter book. I've seen four minutes of one. I of have the read every because my one woman of them. made me sit through it, and for and the I love have read of them god, more than twice. And I would never do that. Once love those books. I wouldn't watch the movie. I'd, I I'd read, read them it. again. Ten I, out of ten. I don't even know that I'd have a beer with Daniel Radcliffe. He bought. He Even bought, when he was in town, I wasn't going to go When he was in him. town, uh, my wife was was in the line at a local coffee shop, and he was in the line. He bought everybody in that line a coffee. That sounds like folklorica right there. Urban legend starting right there. The generosity yeah. of Daniel Radcliffe. It seems, it seems like a I know nice that, guy. Now. I know that ginger kid from Harry Potter turned out to be a really cool person, like when he, he like, Rupert, whatever his name is. Rupert Grint. He, like, went to his hometown and just starts feeding homeless people and taking care of people and starting charitable work. That was kind. Was that yeah. the Mothman? That was a question. No, I'm just, sorry. I'm get sidetracked. You're Rupert Grint the Mothman. But anyway, so where <laughs> I was going with this is there are mythological creatures, and guys, if you remember what, who they are, I'll look them up later and try to get touch base with it again. But there, because we can do a whole podcast when I get more information about creatures that feed off of fear yeah. and off energy. But maybe that's what you're thinking of, these shadow people, because their stories and things go back forever. You know, the shadow people, they just didn't get more popular recently until, you know, that coast-to-coast AM thing when they well, really came to light. But people have been seeing it their whole lives, and that's when it became more of a topic of conversation. You know, so there are these mythological creatures of ancient but, times, and Ireland has stories <laughs> like this. The Gales have stories. Every culture, it seems, has a story of some kind of a creature that just feeds off of human fear, and that's where they draw their power from. Well, so isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't it a fact that, I, I mean, I, I could be talking out of my ass right now, but I remember, like, reading... That fear, people when they have fear, they put off an energy. Like well, supposedly yeah, we put off a sort of energy, and wouldn't it make sense that something like that could feast off an energy? Because people can feel each other's fear. You can feel someone when they're like you can almost like it's almost tangible when someone's either angry, mad, or sad or something like that. People, some people can actually feel that energy coming off of them. Well, I've kind of read I've kind of read things like that experiments with people that the so-called psychic vampires, yeah. where they will take a multimeter and put it in the quote host or feed the feeder person's hands yeah and the other person will touch them and the multimeter will actually start to move during certain emotions so yeah it could be your the body mothman. produces electricity whether or not the mothman's a shadow person maybe i'm wrong maybe it's not a shadow person maybe it's maybe it's it's a, a tangible you know it's its own creature completely um perhaps it, it does have maybe the ability a from a distance shadow person. maybe from a distance it can simply feed off people's fear that's why it just from stands at a distance. distance we're not going there I'm not especially the way I'm feeling today. I, I thought it was going to go somewhere with that, and I just no. No, we're we're not going there. Drop that. Anyway, so perhaps they can like feed from a distance. You know, it can like it can basically take energy out of the air, and that's why it, it stands from it. You know, it, it doesn't get too close. It doesn't get close enough to get shot or anything like that. Well, I mean, if fear fear is a pretty powerful emotion. Um, it, it really is. And if your emotions put off energy, because you know anger puts off energy for sure. You like can cause yourself ink? to die. Well, I mean, kind of. That's a, that's a pretty good... But well, wait, you know, if that again, that Monsters, idea, Inc. Though, is, a, is, a, is a gauge, shouldn't they make people laugh instead because it's much greater? Oh, man, but you're not getting what I'm saying here. Well, that's just a Disney theory to make it happy, but... Mothman's a dick. He doesn't do the other one. Uh, anyway. Well, so what I was trying to get to was there's these creatures supposedly feed off this energy, and you can your body produces energy. We know this. Your, your body exudes, exudes energy. We're like a giant can, battery. Well, if, well, we're like a giant antenna, too. Yeah. We're, we're basically a big bag of water. So we're basically a big antenna. Yeah. And electricity already courses through us. We produce heat. And so there's energy that does come off of us. And it, it's funny because the way the human body works, is it's crazy. It, it feeds off different kind of energy. And it produces different kinds of energy to run. It needs it to run, and then you think about it, there's a test we used to do when I was doing martial arts is you would, ha- you would have someone get, you wouldn't be looking, be blindfolded or whatever, and you would wait and feel to see the proximity of them before they touched you, how, you know, when you could feel them. And you could feel them usually before they actually touched you, whether it's static electricity or some other kind of energy. But that's the point is, like, you'd get close enough in proximity and you could feel the other person without actually touching them. So you're definitely exuding some kind of energy. And I guess if you really want to gain energy from one person, it's fine. But if you're trying to get it from a lot of people, so maybe it's the more people you scare, the less proximity you have to be close to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've seen shadow people. I don't really get scared by them. So, like, I get startled by the first few times I saw them. But now if I see one, it's just like, oh, it's just that thing. You know, it's one of those. 
and it's not even, I mean, it's just settling, but I don't really get scared. I don't want to hang out with it or anything or talk to it. And, but like the point I'm trying to make is, if you really want to get a good amount of energy by scaring somebody, instead of like having to get close to them, just get a group of people scared, and then you can just kind of be around them. So maybe there's that proximity and the amount of people well, is changing, is dependent. Because one-on-one shadow people encounters isn't usually over a long distance. It's, you know, it's not within arm's reach usually, but it's still, it's not as far away as these people are seeing this Mothman. Yeah, I mean, you know, it could be explained why it, it basically terrorized the entire town. Yeah, Get a I mean, whole town freaked out, having to explore for it. It doesn't have to be, like, it, like maybe, maybe like, Bigfoot, it could turn invisible, you know? I, I don't think Bigfoot turns invisible. I think people just aren't seeing it. But but I heard a theory that Bigfoot's invisible, and that um, means it's true. I don't know, man. Lots of theories aren't true. What's your next thing, man? What's your next poll? <laughs> I guess, you know, that kind of leads to the next question. Is it evil? That's the is question. Is it evil? I, I don't know. Like, cause Moment again, of death. Well, a harbinger maybe, but it's never actually harmed anyone directly that we can tell. I mean, unless it brought about these events, maybe it absorbed all this fear, and when the fear was culminated enough, it was able to unleash some kind of horrible havoc, but that wouldn't explain the miners, you know, because they lived because they didn't go in. But then they also mine. died later. Well, yeah, but that could be explained by a lot of different things. First of all, miners don't exactly live the safest lifestyle. What are you talking about? Well, there's lots of gas deposits and stuff and other things in the mine, lots of chemicals you're around all the time. So Wow, those are good for you. And also, you know, Extra 21 minerals. people, it's the odds of all of them living forever are zero. So, <laughs> I mean... I mean, maybe. You never you're, you're not an immortal amongst forever. one of them, perhaps. You're not promised tomorrow, so I assume that just because people fell off all of a sudden afterwards, it doesn't mean it's directly related. Yeah, well, I, you know, I don't know if it's evil either. Maybe it's good. You know, the question is, it shows up supposedly. It's, Maybe it's neutral. It, Maybe it's like it, Switzerland of the supernatural world. <laughs> Maybe it's there to cause fear, but also it causes, like, it tries to help people at the same time. I don't know. I think it was really trying to help people. I don't know that it would be trying to scare the fuck out of them. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if it was, like, psychic like people think it is, it would be, who, it would, who, no, it's who, fucking who scared it's people. I, I've, I've heard rumors that people, like, rumors, sorry. I've heard stories, read stories. I've and heard rumors, read, whisperings. And, and heard videos. Oh, man, is psychic. <laughs> the wind cries. It's a whisper in the wind. I don't think so. What's your so, name? <laughs> <laughs> My next question, do you think he enjoys fruity beverages? Uh, who doesn't? Like, I mean, I don't. I don't either. I mean, sometimes... <coughs> no, if you're no, talking no. about like a grape soda or something like that, I like grape. Well, it's technically a fruity beverage. So I mean, maybe he likes grape sodas. I don't. I don't think that he needs to eat food or drink beverages. Perhaps. Perhaps. I don't. How do we know it's even a he? <clears throat> that, yeah. What if he gets really offended because it's a moth woman? Maybe that's what the problem is. Is that's why people get hurt? Is because in the end they were like, "This is the Moth Man," and then he was like, and then it was like, "No, I'm the Moth Woman," and that's why he destroyed the Silver Bridge. Excuse maybe me. Maybe that's my why name Chernobyl is happened. Susan. Maybe that's that's why that's why the Silver Bridge collapsed. They were calling it the Mothman the whole time. It was like that's uh, not what I. Et- God damn it! Stop calling me Bruce. My name is Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> now is he alone, or are, or there, are many? there many of them? Is it a lone moth person? Yeah. Uh, or are there moth people? I don't know, dude. Um, honestly, if it's a supernatural entity, I don't know that we need to give it a constraint of time or even. I, I, again, it, there's not enough cor- data to to make a decision with that. I don't know, guys. Maybe you have more data. Have you seen more than one moth person at a time? I wonder. If I mean, the, I wonder what the moth person mating rituals are like. I knew that was gonna come up. Eventually. Hey, baby. You know what? Here's how much I like you. I'm gonna go to this town and scare the fuck out of everybody. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just maybe it's like ma- mating dance. Fear. They're just trying to initiate fear to get a mating dance. Do you think it could have been a mass delusion? I already said that though. I brought that one up on, kind of on my own volition. I didn't know you had written that down as a note. Sorry. Apparently, we, we've come to the point where we're starting to dwindle for this episode. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we're getting close on time. I'll go ahead and let's do the rest of your bullet points here. It's just because I'm not feeling too great, guys. Well, the next episode will be better, I'm sure. Do you think it could be related to the Jersey Devil? That's kind of... Uh, no, not even a little bit. They were both um, theorized to be a, a type of crane. That's why I ask. Cause they, like, so are you suggesting it's just a fucking crane? Yeah, apparently it's just a crane. So... You know, it's it's a four, all, both of these yeah, things which are like know, ten man. feet tall cranes, or four foot cranes. Cranes aren't really very thick in body, so I don't know how you'd mistake. Because when you see the drawings of most of the eyewitnesses, it's this bulbous kind of like it's a big mass. Yeah, it's a except large for mass. the ones that drew like the little gray alien type deal. You know what I yeah. mean? That's a little different. Uh, maybe it's just more than one situation that's, that accounts for the different sightings all at one time. Maybe there's some kind of thing going on. 
you know, in West Virginia at the time that was <coughs> drawing all these different apparitions and entities together. Yeah, I mean, it was like a big conference for the paranormal or aliens or whatever. You think it could be a cover up? I don't know I, what was going on at that time in that area. I don't, I don't imagine there was something specific going on before the bridge incident. Of course, I mean, if there was, so I know there's a military base near there, but that doesn't. I mean, there's military bases all over the place. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, and besides, if it was an Air Force base, I'd say probably, because the Air Force is usually tied to these kind of things, like well, supposedly. UFOs, things like that. Well, no, I mean, even when people talk about it, they think that um, if you actually read most of the, the UFOlogists, the heated air UFOlogists quotes. or whatever, if, you, if, if, you, talk, if you listen to these people talk, the vast majority of the time, it's not the CIA or the FBI that shows up to cover this stuff up, it's the, 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 the Air Force. It's the Air Force shows up, Air Force Intelligence shows up and takes almost everything, every time. I thought it was the Men in Black that did that. No, it's the Air Force Intelligence. Like, oh. it's not Men in Black, it's Air Force Intelligence. Okay, so is it a Mothman in Black? Apparently, it's uh, the Mothman. <laughs> well, okay, keep that in mind, too, though. It can't, I, I go back to like the first, <laughs> the second sighting. They didn't really give a shadow person description because they said it was white, almost like he was wearing a bodysuit or something. And that um, it, it yeah. had white and it had feathers and stuff or something like that. I didn't see that part. <laughs> yeah, it was in the, in the original story. I just didn't write it on my notes. Oh. Uh, well, it was, it was something I read earlier. I just spaced on it and write it down. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't read that part, so. so. I think, you know, and then we come down to, like, why the hell do they have a festival for this fucking thing, do you think? I, I, I just heard about this today, and <laughs> I, I had heard that, like, it's a touchy subject to even bring up in that area in Point Pleasant, so I don't know why, I mean... There's a fucking statue maybe they museum. Past things on it. Yeah, maybe it's just they've adapted the tourist thing. Guys, I don't know if you're from Point Pleasant. Let us know your insights on this if you think yeah. it's in... You know, just Why the, the hell would you have a festival? Answer that question real quick. Because I'll you like pegging Gotti well, over there. No, yeah. no, no. And he's not accusing you of that because he's just dumb. But, uh... <sighs> I think what we're trying to get at is if it's something that's linked to such a harrowing tragedy, or maybe they don't link it directly to there, they don't actually link it to the tragedy. Maybe the people at Point Pleasant, most of them don't actually link it directly to that. It's just a cool thing that happened, and then there was a tragedy. Well, they probably don't believe in it, but it also brings probably brings up tourism and stuff like that. So they probably just well, I'm it. sure. But see, we we're approaching it with the idea that the bridge was associated directly to it. Well, maybe they're not viewing it that way up front. You know what I mean? Being there. That would be like, you know... You lost, you lived in, you know, Hiroshima, Japan, and you just lost your job, and then there was a big explosion and everything was gone. <laughs> you know, and, the, is, you know, the upsetting part is that you lost your job, but the really upsetting part's a lot worse, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or you had your birthday right before the bomb went off. You're going to not celebrate your birthday anymore if you made it out of there? I mean, <laughs> maybe you'd want to celebrate your birthday more often. That's maybe a good that's, point. <laughs> so maybe we're just linking it to it because it seems like such a large event correlates to it. But who, I don't think the stories of the bridge being directly correlated, again, were even really spoken about being cor you know, connected until later on, years yeah. later. So this might be just a separate <laughs> mindset altogether. I think, I think one of the biggest things that we're going to take away from this episode is we literally had nothing. Well, and yeah, we had some things. It's just, again, I'm sick and you didn't write any notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's going he's gonna to hammer that one home, but I think he's, he's suffering from the Mandela effect once again. Um, <laughs> how was the movie? <laughs> Do you think? Oh man, uh, let me tell you, I Plus preferred. Was it factual? Do you think I, the other movies with Richard Gere that I preferred? Uh, Pretty Woman, which I also hate, and <laughs> The Jackal, which had Bruce Willis, and you can't really go wrong with that. No, I mean no. No. Well, sometimes. Usually. Sometimes. There's rare occasions, it's occurrences. I mean, it just depends on if you make like a, a fifth or sixth movie in your in your hey, long. You shut spring. up! You <laughs> shut up about! You shut up! You do not speak nary John McClane in this household. I will kick you in your my long, apologies. bald, manly, non-manly <laughs> ass. I, I, you know, my personal opinion on the movie was that it was like, it was interesting as an entertainment I, perspective. But here's it was exactly really... where I fall with that movie. It was so uninteresting. I don't remember anything aside from the fact that it was Richard Gere was in it and a bridge fell at the end of it. It was fucking slow. That's, like... I don't, I mean, I remember nothing about the movie aside from Richard Gere's in it. Had to do with the Mothman. And then a bridge collapsed. I think I remember bullet points. I remember three fucking things from the that's, movie. That's, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. I mean... Now, guys, I'm not, I haven't watched it uh, in, in many years. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a long <laughs> while. And I, is Richard Gere even still around? I think he died in 97. We're not going to have a Richard Gere effect. I shouldn't have started that. At least you're starting to understand what the Mandela effect really is. By that joke, I hope. I'm sure the internet's killed him by now at this point. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I think this particular cast and episode has le has flown the coop. It's, it's Mothman away from Wait, do you think he us. wears spandex? No. Underwear on the outside? I think he's probably allergic to spandex. 
<laughs> Maybe latex, powderless latex. Uh, this episode's just off the rails. It's covered in silicone rubber. This this episode is covered silicone in silicone rubber. rubber. Silicone rubber. Uh, we're gonna end that there, I guess. Huh? Okay. No. Anyway, guys. So basically, what did we learn today? N- not much. <laughs> we learned that we need to know more about Mothman. I mean, what else is there to really fucking know? <laughs> I'm, again, people have written many books about this particular exact subject. I don't know so how. Like, lives. it must be the same book written well, many again, different times. Well, again, you only looked at so much of it before deciding we needed to cover this as a topic. On I read, show. like, one, I mean, one thing. I was like, hey, that's the Mothman. Let's do this show now. And you're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. And then we get into it. It's like, okay, okay, Jack, lead the, lead the show. I, I don't have anything. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's not going to be the direction this show has to go in if we're going to make the successful guys. I don't think Jack can lead the show no more. <laughs> no, anyway, guys. All right, so, again, if you have any email suggestion, nice comments at this point. We don't even need negative ones <laughs> at this point. Uh, uh, just email us at vanishinggates, two Gs, at gmail.com. You can't hate us any more than we hate ourselves. That's not true. Also, leave comments if you're on YouTube. Leave a comment below. Let Please us don't know. Like and like, subscribe. Like, subscribe, yeah. Yeah, like and subscribe. I don't know Follow why you... Follow us on the Facebooks. I mean, we do... Oh, that's right, we do have a Facebook. We, yeah, it's no longer one. Mythical Beast. No, we've had one for a few episodes, and I forgot all about that. Yeah, quite a few episodes, actually. Holy crap. Actually, I, oh, I started the Facebook before we even aired the first episode, I think. Oh. Or um, right the same day we aired the first I, I episode. I thought it was fake, so... No, you just never looked at it. Oh, that's groovy. Good. Gl- yeah. I'm glad. I don't want it anymore. All right, But you guys, guys should definitely do it. All right, guys. Well, have a great night, and this is Jay. This is Jack. Thanks for listening to Vanishing Gates, Paranormal Podcast. It's the best fucking show there is. That's nice. Bye, everybody. Start music.